Yeah. Yeah. Most of my presentations really deal with varieties, so this one's called a variety of oh, airmail oh. variety. Okay. This is this one, the famous for the first airmail stamp, of course, with uh, a swollen breast variety. It's the upper right. We'll look at it in more close detail. Here it is again. Now this is on C3, which is the six cent overprint on a five cent, but it has the same swollen breast variety. Now, I don't know what Scott calls it, but it, in, in, in Unitrade, it's called twin winged figures, which really seems bizarre. In my language, that's, that's not what they are. They're just angels. They should be called angels. I wonder if angels is politically incorrect. I don't know what Scott calls it. All I know is what Unitrade calls it. And uh, it's, the, it's both C1 and C3. And fairly straightforward. This is the molting wing on C5. It's also very rare. Now, this is a collectible simply because it's uh, on a Hindenburg cover. Those Hindenburg covers were um, were quite, can be a collectible item by themselves. Some people collect them, all the different flights, because all the flights are logged. They all have, this is flight LZ-129-2. Um, and unfortunately, had to pay the 70 cent rate. It can be carried on this Zeppelin. And it's fortunately, when the very back in that block of eight, that's what we're looking for is that little black line through the just above the his leg, or in this case, yeah, he still looks like an angel to me. Oh no, this is Dedalia. This was this was the fellow who made wings to fly close to the sun. Well, Icarus is the one, oh. the figure. Oh. Well, who, okay, who, honor, who made the wings? But why? What is this meaning of that phrase, molting wing? That's what they've called. They just described it as, as that's what they've given this black line a name rather than just saying black line on wing. It's it looks like a molting. I mean, when it when a creature molts, it mm. produces extra stuff. So that's what wow. they've called it. But where I don't understand where the variety is. Uh, it's a that, black line here. Ah, uh, in that rectangle. This line here. That line oh, there. I see. I see. Okay. That wouldn't be there on a normal variety on, uh -huh. on the other positions. Okay. And it's, it's a position, it's on a position on the plate. So it's fixed. That's a constant plate variety. This is the cool find. This one I bought uh, just on spec from an auction house, a whole bunch of these Canada's covers and said, hope that there's something in there because there is uh, a major re-entry that I need for the collection is well documented. A lot of people know about it. But what was interesting is that this is an OHMS cover. Mm. Uh -huh. And that stands for on his, on his Majesty's service at the time. What I didn't know at the time was we have two versions. We all know about there's in Canadian, there's, there's the five hole OHMS, which talks about the five holes in the M or the H. But these were only from, they started with 23, 1923 to about 35, and they were only, they were not issued by the post office. They were issued by the Department of Finance for, obviously, for Department of Finance mail. You mint, you can't get them, and the pricing is only unused in, in the catalog. Mm. The, and that's, I found interesting that it was the Department of Finance. The so four hole, smaller <coughs> one again, just four holes there. Uh, in those letters, and a little smaller all the way around, um, they were issued by the post office starting in, and in 1939, all governments had to use OHMS mail. There's two versions, subtle differences in the, in the hole punching, and of course, mint and used are available. But these are post office issue. The first set of OHMS were just for the Department of Finance. They are also easily forged. So it's a bit of a weak link to be able to. Oh, we could tell a forgery. The, there are specific ways that you can tell um, in terms of the holes. And so I don't know what it is. I haven't studied it enough, but there are subtle telltale symbols um, about the holes. That's the, they have to be clean and clear for sure. They have to be, and if there's any paper residual stuck in the hole, then it's not likely a, a genuine stamp. 
But this one cover also, in addition to being an OHMS, has got the variety that's the double frame line, very common on that stamp, um, both the, uh, oh, and, you know, of course, on the regular issue and the non-OHMS issue. That's the OC9, of course, for officials, but it's also on the regular issue, and it's in the upper right-hand corner. The Unitrade catalog only talks about it being in the upper right-hand corner, but the upper left is also doubled and uh, pretty impressive. So to find that one on the last, on the last of about 12 covers that I bought, in one lot, and I'm thinking to myself, looking at this one, this one, looking at them all, saying nothing, 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 and there's one on the last one. <laughs> uh, there seemed to be writing underneath that stamp that was written. The stamp was put over the writing. Can you figure out? Yes, that that's, that has to do with the uh, whoever the, the the government official is, presumably, um, to prove that it's. And that it wouldn't have. It probably wouldn't have needed postage if it wasn't going airmail. Uh -huh. Maybe they only needed to provide postage on it if it was going airmail. I don't know. This is from 1947, 1947. So there is, yeah, sometimes we do see signatures for the, the name of the official whose, whose department it's being used in. And this one was an interesting one. This is also an airmail cover with a, what we call the three cent mufti. Uh, King George the Sixth. There's two of them, with a very unusual emergency postmark. And the consensus seems to be it is tied. It doesn't look like it, but it is tied just right here. The little bit of the purple ink came through between the purse, and there's a little bit of ink here in in the purse between. Sometimes the tying of a, on a of a stamp on a cover can only be with between in the purse between them, rather than if it doesn't happen to happen around the outside. Um, the emergency cancels, the consensus seems to be that they are used by a post office when for whatever reason they've had a fire or they've had a, some other damage and they no longer have their hammers. That's the best story we can come up with for this one coming down to Newark. Arnie, what is a mufti? That's a normal clothes. That's it. That's it. Street clothes as opposed to guard. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I have heard that. That um, he's he's not in his military uniform. Uh, and during the war, he was in his military uniform. This is an interesting round the world cover. It's airmail, of course. It starts in Canada, and I took it to China on a commercial flight. Went to Singapore. Had the international in each place. I had the correct international postage added. This was in Australia off to Germany. This was all business trip. And then the final stop was in Spain. Now that was throwing on a, a week or 10 days vacation at the end at the end of this trip. My wife met me there. And then I mailed mailed it from Spain back to Canada. But certainly did do everything. And the last one, this is a military crash cover. It's an unusual one because you don't get too much military crash cover mail. Um, and, but it's interesting because when I bought it, the, the sellers claimed that there was very little information about this on the internet. And when I first did research it, when I got it a few months ago, um, I said, you're right. But then I did another search in preparing the presentation said, better check to make certain there isn't nothing. And wow, this is the website. If you're interested in any airplane crash or, or safety incidents go to the aviation safety network website and they have literally tens of hundreds well, probably over a hundred thousand safety incidents many not all crashes of course but they did have this one what they didn't know and in their in their database they tried to to explain was the crash on takeoff or landing so i emailed the organizers and said you know Considering this was postmarked January 22nd and the crash occurred on the 25th, I suspect it was on takeoff and not on landing. Everything, anything you could ever imagine about plane crashes and safety incidents. They have two different white databases, but uh, if you have any plane crash covers or anything like that, you're welcome to check out that Aviation Safety Network website. Oh, the last one, of course, is another email. TD, I think you may have seen this. TD sent me a letter in the summer and uh, they decided to courier it over to the uk first 
UK sent it on Bermuda. The Bermuda Post said, well, miss sent to Bermuda. They sent it on to Barbados. <laughs> Barbados re-stamped it again. Now that top mark in, in the circles is what I've created based on what was written in purple on the label, actually. And then it finally made it to Antigua um, <laughs> with two miss cents on the right. And uh, so if you want to know how it went, it went up from the UK over to Bermuda up in the top there, came down to Barbados in the bottom, and finally to Antigua and Bermuda in the middle. Okay, that's it. Just a short one. <laughs>